Hello and welcome to the second video covering all of the new units that have been voted for for the new upcoming Awakening of the Clone Wars game. So as we have Maxim, one of the developers of Awakening of the Clone Wars, it is time to start another round of voting. This time with even more options, we have 11 total units that have been revealed for Awakening of the Clone Wars. Have fun voting and guessing what could be behind each code word. So we got Crab, T-Pose, Transport, Security, Cargo, Medic, Crystal, Leader, Technology, Bomb, Sale. So if you don't know what this is, in the Awakening of the Rebellion Discord under Mod Previews, every now and then they'll have votes in which that we can vote based off what emoji we pick, and behind each code word is a new unit that will be featured within the game. So we've already had one of these videos where it featured all of these units you see on your screen now, so I highly, go, highly recommend you go and check out that video before checking out this one. And without any more talking, let's go ahead and get this video going. So behind the first reveal is the T-Posing V19 Torrent. The V-19 will be a starting unit for the Republic being carried into battle from different ships. It's a fighter class with swarm interceptor role. Description, the V-19 turrets were designed to serve as the primary starfighters of the Republic until improved craft became available. They feature great speed and maneuverability and are equipped with an impressive arsenal of anti-fighter weapons for craft of their size. However, they lack shielding and an astromech for repairs and are therefore unlikely to survive for long and prolonged engagements. So that makes sense without either the ability to heal or shields they're going to die after a certain amount of time they have no way of healing themselves so they do have one concussion missile though which is really really good there's eight of them per squadron too many lasers is definitely not bad 12 health is not horrible um they're pretty fast but not super fast but as you can see they definitely are an early tech unit but for an early, early tech unit they're not terrible they're not terrible at all all right, moving on to round two, we got the Crab behind it, which is the Scarab Fighter. The Scarab will be an early fighter for the CIS, being more bulky than the popular Vulture Droid. So it's a fighter with a Swarm Fighter role. Scarab Fighters are the predecessors of the Vulture Droid Starfighters. They have strong armor and their successors, oh, strong, stronger armor than their successors, and are even equipped with shields but are far less agile and comparatively very expensive, leading them to be fielded in lower numbers. The Scarab does, however, possess the ability to lock its wings into flight configuration, allowing it to move faster and more quickly recharge its shield, which is also a good detail, when circumstances allow. So it's 6 health, 6 shields, 350 speed, low turn rate, which is really important, and it only has 2 light lasers, and it does come in squads of 8. It does have a passive of droid aim, which reduces its accuracy, which most droid units are going to have in this mod. So keep that in mind as well. And here's the Scarab Fighter. Here it is with its s foils locked for speed and faster shield regeneration. And there it is, kind of fighting off some V19s. Pretty cool. An early tech fighter with has shields and hull. And yeah. Moving on to the next one, we have... Oh, this is a... Talking about some AOTR stuff, they've got a new update coming out for AOTR, we're going to see some more of that down here as well. But moving on to the Awakening of Clone Wars stuff, after a small break we'll continue the voting previews. This time Technology 1, which means it's going to showcase the Techno Union Techno Union Frigates. The Techno Union Frigate will be an early tech unit providing great support. We are aware that this design is Fanon, so keep that in mind, this is not the ones you see actually in the movies. This is a Fanon design. But since we all love it so much in Republic at War, we have decided to include it into AOTR. This is a frigate class with a disabler and picket role. Very interesting. The description, the Techno Union frigate was developed during the Clone Wars to support the larger cruisers developed by the Confederacy. It carries stun ion cannons to disable large targets, as well as assault missiles to eliminate corvettes and frigates. It is therefore a versatile support ship, best used alongside other vessels with more raw firepower at their disposal. So here it is, the look of it. Obviously the fan design like includes like the wings and stuff like that. I don't think the wings are supposed to be on it. I personally wish they went with the regular design because I like I really like the regular design, but I'm not too upset about it. 1000 shields, 1500 regular armor, or no, medium armor, that's not bad. 300 speed with high turn and acceleration, low sensor range, keep that in mind. Um, okay, here's the weapons. Two medium stun ion cannons, so people are going to love that, as well as the two four-burst assault missiles. People are going to love that. Four-point defense lasers and three light turbo lasers. This thing is going to be one of the best support ships. Look at that support arsenal, man. 
so many great weapons, even the point defense lasers for taking out fighters. It also comes with a scare squadron, which is good, and its tactical population is only 9. It also comes with the power to engines ability, which allows it to get to places quicker. Really, really good support ship. That might be the best thing I've seen so far in this game. Um, there's the next poll. Looks like we've got Cargo winning this. I kept voting for Cargo and Transport, not thinking like Star Wars terminology. Okay, Cargo is definitely going to be a uh, carrier. Same with Transport. Transport's probably going to be a transport unit. I don't know why I didn't think that through. Um, but nobody cares. Behind the code word is the Captor Carrier, which has gotten the amazing new model and will of course only carry fighters because obviously we have this unit in AOTR. Developed prior to the Clone Wars to serve as an armed cargo ship for the Trade Federation, Captors have been adopted to the CIS as carriers. It has plenty of space to house multiple squadrons of fighters and repair equipment needed to support them. The Captor carrier isn't much of a threat to proper warships, but its size makes it durable enough to take on some fire whilst it supports and deploys its starfighters. Really high health, look at that, 5,000 health is really good, plus 2,500 shields. 2500 sensor range, which really isn't all that great. Um, let's see, one dual turbo laser, four laser cannons, six point defense. So, yeah, if fighters break through, it can definitely take out some fighters. Does come with a supply drop ability, which is pretty good. Here's the problem I don't like two by six Vulture Droid squadrons, especially look at that tactical population space 17, it's pretty high. I don't think that's very good. Now, one thing that the guys were talking to me about is 2x6 with Ultra Droids. Ultra Droids will be much stronger in this game than they are in Awakening Rebellion. But still, I feel like two squadrons is just not that many at one time. So, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this could be pretty weak to start off the game. But, you know, carriers typically can be very overpowered. So, you definitely want to start them off weaker and then maybe add a third Scarab Squadron or something like that, you know. So, I'm curious to see what y'all have to say about that. 2x6. Is that too weak or too strong? Too good? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Maxim continues as he says... Oh, this one was really competitive. As you can see, they got 174 to 175. So, I think he was basically saying whoever gets to 150 first. And it looks like it was... Uh, the leader, which is one of the Republic's leading Republic fleets, the Command Venator. As a capital ship with a role in the line, ship of the line role, sorry, made distinct by the Red Bridges, Command Venators are a modified version of the regular Starfight Star Destroyer. Keep that in mind. It's a modified Command Venator designed to serve as anchors, fleet anchors. They carry a greater number of heavy weapons, feature better shielding, and incorporate the fat laser. Keep that in mind. But it also doesn't have as big of a hangar bay. It actually doesn't look like it has any hangar bay. Check that out. This does reduce the amount of starfighters it can carry, but it doesn't look like it has any complement redacted. I don't know what that means. Maybe they're not fully ready to go with that. So it looks like it does carry some fighters, but they haven't decided what it looks like yet. And so they will require an escort whilst they play to their strengths and take on heavier armored capital ships and space stations. So this thing does have eight medium long range jolt turbolators, some heavy large proton torpedoes and a bunch of other turbo lasers as well. Also has flak laser cannons, keep that in mind. 12,000 shields, 15,000 medium armor is pretty good. Max range of 5250, which is really, really good. And then of course it also comes with the fire composite beam ability as well as, as, well as power to weapons. So this thing's gonna be a very late tech unit, but it is gonna be your main capital ship for dealing damage. You might end up building more of these than regular Venators, but I feel like, I don't know, you're going to be building a lot of Venators as well. I bet this thing's pretty expensive, upwards of 20 to 25,000 credits, so yeah. Um, also, sorry if you hear that bird. Um, Maxim, well, that was an interesting one. Behind the bomb code word is the Syntax Frigate, which will act as a late-tech torpedo boat for the Republic. So it's a frigate class with a torpedo boat role. Syntax frigates are designed to hunt down and destroy opposing capital ships. They are armed with powerful torpedoes alongside an array of laser cannons for dealing with lighter opponents, though they lack hangar bays. Their strong engines allow them to rapidly accelerate and quickly reach the enemy, but they do suffer from a low turn rate, making precise retreats and repositioning difficult. That's a really important detail It's the low turn rate. So when you're trying to get this thing to shoot its torpedoes, keep in mind, torpedoes have to be facing the opponents. 
So if it's like facing the wrong way, but there's a looser Hulk right in front of it, it would take a long time for this thing to turn to take on that looser Hulk. So you gotta be very careful with how you position this unit. Otherwise, it's great damage dealing capabilities will be minimized. But as you can see, it was taken on that percent. but it also looks like the torpedoes are firing and it's not facing it, so it might be wrong. Maybe the torpedoes can fire without facing directly at the opponent. 3,000 shield, 4,000 armor is actually pretty good for a small unit in which it's going to have only 1,500 ideal range. So having a lot of health is going to be good for its poor range, but I guess it's high health is because it's a late tech unit, so it's got better armor. All right, pretty good unit right there. Crystal blows it out this time. You can also see which ones I voted for. I kept voting for transport, like I said, for some reason. I don't know why. Behind the code word is the no long... Uh, I suck at speaking sometimes. Diamond Cruiser, which will come at two different configurations. So we get the Diamond Cruiser with two different configurations. The first one is the standard configuration, which has green markings and is an early tech unit, mostly meant to fend off fighters and support the fight with its new ability to drop spider droids into battle. The other configuration is the Combat Refit, which is a higher tech unit in full CIS livery or library and is deadly corvette to f and frigate hunter with a pursuit ability. So the first rendition is the Corvette Cruiser with a role of screener. The Diamond Cruisers were used as transports by the Commerce Guild prior to the Clone Wars. These nimble vessels carry anti-fighter units or weapons to defend themselves whilst relying on their mobility to escape from greater threats. Diamond cruisers can also vent spider droids into combat to cover their retreats, which are numerous enough to damage opposing ships with their weapons. So check that out. I wonder what a ship means. I would assume it's mostly fighters, but I guess it will also count towards corvettes and frigates maybe as well. Look at this though. Only 400 and 600 health. That's really bad. Now its tactical population space is only 8. But for a screener roll, this thing can die to fighters very easily, especially if it's a big enough unit. So I'm very curious to see whether we're going to be using the Diamond Cruisers as an anti-fighter unit or a unit that is going to be shown later on. So the description is the Diamond Cruisers. I already read that. Yeah, I already read that. Okay, so yeah, pretty low health for dual flak laser cannons. So it doesn't do a lot of damage to fighters itself, but the flak laser cannons will help out. So keep that in mind. I would see myself not using this unit. Maybe one or two just for the flak effect, but I feel like the unit that is revealed later on, which we'll get to, might be better at taking out fighters. Um, here's the combat refit, which is a hunter role. Keep that in mind, very important. The commerce guild refitted some of the diamond cruisers for direct combat duties. These combat refits carry a wide array of laser cannons, allowing them to hunt down opposing corvettes and frigates while providing fire support against fighter attacks. They come with 200 more health, which is in a huge amount. Their ideal range is still 1500, which is actually lower than the other. And it has two heavy two burst laser cannons, four dual laser cannons, and four light dual laser cannons. So, that is pretty interesting. Oh, look at that. There's the spider droids. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, those things are definitely going to be... Oh, they got the big ones and the small ones. Check that out. That is so interesting. I've never seen this in space before. I wonder where they got that from in Star Wars. I don't know. I feel like this might be one of the worst units I've seen so far. I wonder what y'all's opinion is. Alright, next is the security, which is the Red Republic security ship, the Judicator Corvettes. The Judicator will be a starting unit for the Republic and ensure the swarms of droid fighters will be kept in check. They are a screener slash hunter role with the Corvette class. Judicator Corvettes, also known as the Republic's light assault cruisers, are refitted consular cruisers armed for service with the Judicial Forces of the Republic. They are typically assigned to protect the Republic systems for pirate fighters and other small threats and are forced to retreat against f stronger opponents. So only 250 health and 400 sh hull. It looks like maybe in Awakening the Clone Wars, everything just has less health, but I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out later on. Um, 300 speed is pretty low for a Corvette. I guess it's kind of actually typical, honestly. I think the Raiders 300 too. Um, also, this thing has Pursuit ability, which is really, really good for its role. Definitely don't want to pass that by. But it also doesn't come with the Deploy Spider Droids, so keep that in mind as well. So we have this thing. 
700, 650 health total, which is not that good. But only eight tactical population space. And obviously it is a screener slash hunter role. So it's got two medium dual laser cannons and four, four point defense lasers. So this thing's going to be solid. You know, you just put it in your battles and then it'll kill some fighters. You don't have to worry about micromanaging it too much if you don't want to. So pretty decent unit. And as we get closer to the end of this video, we've got Medic, which is, of course, the Pelta. The Pelta Frigate will be available in two different configurations, the Support Variant, which is the starting unit for the Republic, and the Combat Variant, which is an early tech unit. The Support Frigate will be have a lot of red markings and a big Republic symbol, while the Combat Variant only features small red highlights and is otherwise pretty gray. This will make it easier to tell which one you're fighting, obviously. Both Peltas are able to open their engine sections for additional speed at the cost of fire rates. Now keep that in mind, that is not a boost power to engines. It's actually a, an S-foil S ability, which is really good. So you can keep that speed up if you want it to have that speed for a lot longer than just a regular old power to engines ability. So the description is the modular design of the Pelta frigates allowing them to be used in many different ways. The so-called support variant carries repair droids first repair unit we've seen to fix up nearby ships. It features wing attachments, which can be opened up to reveal additional engines, which movement speed is a priority. Also has to, yeah, so flight s ability as well as deploy repair drones. Six repeating point defense lasers, so it's gonna be good in like a bit of a screener role as well. It's also much tankier than some of the other units as it has 1800 total health, and it still only has nine tactical population space. So one thing I'm very, very excited to see about this game is a relatively lower tactical population space because I want to see bigger battles than Awakening Rebellion because Clone Wars did have bigger battles. Look at the Battle of Coruscant. Look at the Battle of Geonosis. The battles were huge. So I'm really excited to see some bigger battles, especially in space. So hopefully that'll be the case. And so far, it seems like everything has a pretty low tactical population space, even though these units should have low tactical population space because they're small units. Hopefully that will continue to be the case. What do you have? 37, so that's still pretty low. Most Star Destroyers are 40, 42, and 44, I believe. Um, no, it's, I think it's 38, 40, and 42. So here we've got the... Um, yeah, so the modular design of the Pelto allows them to be used in different ways. Wait, what the heck? Oh, yeah. So this one is equipped with a tractor beam and an array of laser cannons, allowing it to pin opposing corvettes in position and then blast them apart. It features wing attachments, which can be opened up to reveal additional engines when hunting down ships is needed. So this thing has the same amount of health, keep that in mind. A little bit of a different range, but it's got two heavy laser cannons and five medium two burst laser cannons. So this is going to be a great hunter. Great hunter, because it can also increase its speed. Depending on how they have the tractor beam ability to work, it could potentially pin down a unit and then just blast it apart, like it says in the description. Still only a 9 tactical population space. It's really, really good. So this thing could be a really, really good frigate roll and hunter roll as well. So here's some more of the Awakening Rebellion stuff. I might make a video on that. They basically changed a bunch of the GCs and added some stuff in. So that's pretty exciting. So I'm, like I said, I might make a video on that. So the second to last unit is going to be the C9979 frigates. Originally used as transport, some of them have been converted to combat units, being available to this as a starting unit for the CIS, though it's noticeable that they weren't intended for combat, so keep that in mind. Frigate with the role of picket, so these escort frigates were originally designed to carry Trade Federation troops into battle, as we see in Episode 1. Their weapon systems and overall sturdiness make them effective escort units, able to deal with fighters and corvettes while in whilst enduring the fire of larger ships. So this thing has 1700 health, which is much better than some of the other units. Only 175 speed with low acceleration and very low turn, so very low maneuverability, as you can imagine, since we've all seen this unit in Star Wars. I feel like this thing is going to be a much better, much better unit. I don't know, look at the weapon systems though. It's two light, two burst, two of lasers, and two heavy, two burst laser cannons. Those weapon systems are not great at killing small fighters. So it looks like you will have to use some of those diamond cruisers as well. 
It does have one scare squadron, which is great. The brace for impact ability, which is solid as well. As well as the tactic for population space of seven, which is great. So it looks like the picket roll is the best roll for this unit. Can help against frigates, cruisers, corvettes, as well as supporting you against like gunships and heavy bombers and stuff like that as well. Pretty interesting unit. I wonder how these guys are going to be used as well. And finally, the final unit is the Wavecrest Frigate. The Wavecrest will be a planet-specific unit from Yagdul and will only be buildable in limited numbers. Keep that in mind. It's very interesting. But it's a pretty good choice to get and hunt enemy cruisers with it. Here's the stats. Frigate roll, or no, frigate class with a destroyer and ion boat. It comes from Yagdul shipyards, so keep that in mind as well. You have to get Yagdul in order to build this unit. Which makes sense, because you do see these things in Star Wars, but they're not quite as common as something like this guy, you know. So the description, the wave crest frigates are an experimental design built by the shipyards of Yagdul. Plans to sell them onto one of the bigger conglomerates of the CIS never came to fruition, and so they never entered full mass production. Those that were produced are, however, effective in battle, serving as a swift destroyer capability of rapidly dismantling shields with their ion cannons. 4,000 total health for a unit with only 9 tactical population space. So yeah, it looks like they're keeping the tactical population space very low to allow for bigger battles. 350 speed, high acceleration, high turn, since the range, only a 1,000 ideal range. And that is because it has six medium close range turbo ion cannons. Wow. Eight light range close range turbo lasers. That's impressive. And it has a stun, it has the ion barrage ability, which is going to be amazing. Plus an entire unit of scare fighters. This thing is going to be really good. If the CIS starts with Yagdul, it doesn't say how many you can build, but I'm assuming it's only going to be able to build like three, maybe five of these units. Hopefully five, because like I said, these aren't super common, but you do see them in Star Wars. So it's not like they're not common at all. I feel like they're one of the more common, not common units, if that makes any sense at all. But look at the weapon systems on this thing. Nine tactical population space. I wonder how expensive they are. Not a ton of health. Not a ton of health, especially for a close range unit of an ideal range of 1,000. But this thing by far has been one of the best units we've seen. And with that, that wraps it up. So we've got 11 new units. I feel like this thing could be really good. I obviously love the idea of this command Venator. Having two different Venators is going to be amazing. And so I'm, I don't know how I feel about two and six. I think redacted means that they might change it. That's why they have this thing as redacted as well. So... Definitely let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. I really want to know what y'all think about each one of these units. If you want, definitely join the AOTR Discord or my Discord as well. I'll link them both in the description below. And definitely get involved in the comments. I want to see what y'all think about all these different units. Like I said, there is another video covering the first set of units that have been released. And if they do any more of these voting previews, definitely join the AOTR Discord so you can be a part of the voting aspect. And then as well, like always, I'll make a third video for that as well. So thanks for watching and have a good day.